Shalom, I'm Eddie Chomney of Hebraic Heritage Ministries and we welcome you today to our study on the Hebraic Roots of Christianity. We are doing a series on what the rabbis in Judaism teaches about the Ten Tribes and I am here in the city of Jerusalem with Yair Davidi. Yair is an Orthodox Jew and he spends his full time doing study and research on the Ten Tribes through the organization, ministry, which he founded, which is Brit Am. And um, all the, the information that he has on this subject that he's sharing is at his website, BritAm.org. And being an Orthodox Jew, uh, Yair doesn't believe that Yeshua is the Messiah. He doesn't believe in the New Testament. He's just here to help us to understand the subject of the Ten Tribes from a rabbinic and a, a Jewish point of view. And as we've covered on the various programs, Yair is just not sharing his personal opinion. Um, the research that he has done is backed up not only by the Bible, but with uh, rabbinical sources and as well as uh, historical, uh, linguistic, and uh, other proofs on the subject matter. So um, we are continuing in looking at the biblical characteristics of the Ten Tribes and in the last couple programs we've gone over uh, the following characteristics that they would possess the gates of their enemies, they would be located in the Isles of the Sea, they would be in the north, in the west, they would be in the land of Sinem, which uh, Yair explained that uh, the rabbis understand this is associated with the South Land, with um, Australia. They would be militarily powerful. They would be very numerous. They would be um, economically prosperous. Um, they would be associated with monarchies. And as we was ending our last program, we were talking about uh, the connection of a Manasseh and Ephraim, and Yair went into detail regarding uh, the word Manasseh in Hebrew and the rabbinical commentaries regarding the name, and from that um, connection and, and associations and characteristics of the word Manasseh in Hebrew, um, we connect it to a representative uh, democracy uh, and other things, and, and we ended in last program where Yair was um, sharing that one of the sons of Manasseh is Macher, and this is connected with the name America. And first of all, Yair, I want to welcome you uh, back you. to the program. Um, sure. Glad that you're um, here again with us to um, explain these things from, um, from a Jewish uh, point of view. And so how about if we continue where we left off last week on the program where we were looking at um, in one of the characteristics that was given to uh, the descendants of Abraham which of course would include all twelve tribes but we're focusing on particularly the ten tribes that there would be kings that would uh, come from him and you mentioned that this is associated with monarchies and how western people particularly have countries that set up according to monarchies and then we started talking about uh, Manasseh and Ephraim, and so uh, let's um, continue uh, where you talked about and explain how uh, Mecher, a son of Manasseh, is going to be uh, connected with America, and then, then let's get into Ephraim, how that's associated with uh, being a, a, a people of aristocrats, uh, and then we'll talk about the Union Jack or Yaakov, and how that's connected with Britain, and connected with the United States in the form of Yankee. Once again, that's a lot of information, but we'll just begin the process and, uh, and discuss these issues. So, uh, first start talking about Macher, and explain more, because we got cut off on the last program, okay. uh, regarding how uh, that name uh, can be connected to um, the name America and the founding of America. Okay, so we saw, we saw previously how they lost jobs, wherever they are, those jobs would have to be, have to be military powerful, have to have an influence all over the world, possess strategic uh, gates of their enemies, be extremely wealthy, possess a good push on the earth, 
of the wealth of the earth and the, and the raw resources of the earth also be extremely numerous. We also mentioned that um, Mena uh, Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, were separate tribes in their own right, and how uh, indications are that Manasseh would become the dominant element in North America, especially in the USA. The firstborn son of Manasseh was called Mechia. Mechia in Latin, and as transliter transliterated into Latin as we have documentary evidence, it was uh, often uh, rendered as, as uh, Amerigo. Michel Mechia was also given the nickname Hamachiri. It's found in the Bible, literally meaning Hamachirites, the literal the, the descendants of Mechia in the plural. It could also be applied to a singular person. But one person who is known as Hebrew numbers Mechia is nicknamed Hamachiri, the person from Mechia. And this, in Latin, became Americo. Amer and, Amer and it also is because of there was a Jewish hero in the southern France uh, who also had this name. And the name also spread to, um, it was recognized by a saint, by some, for some reason or other, by the Catholic Church. So his name was spread to the Gentile population. There was a Gentile from northern Italy called Americo Vespucci, who was a navigator, and he gave his name to America. America is named after him. When you say the word America in, in a common speech, you're not referring to the North and South America, you're uh, referring especially to the USA. America is another name, a well-known name. Uh, Conundrum, uh, uh, connotation for the USA, America, and America indirectly means Mechia, the first one son of Menashe. So therefore, America we can say it could be considered to be derived from the word Mechia or Hamechiri, sons of Mechia, the first one son of Menashe. Uh, Mechia in Hebrew has several meanings. One of the meanings is price, or in, uh, in Hebrew, in Biblical Hebrew, can mean uh, capitalism, the principle of capitalism. And America is the foremost capitalist country in the world, and the American Constitution is, uh, is, is based on the principle of capitalism. All right, so so we, there we have the names, uh, the name, and we also mentioned it in the Bible, also confirmed by the Talmud, the name is reflected in the essence of a, of a people. Uh, getting back to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Ephraim, to Ephraim was the other son of the nation. Well, let's, uh, um, um, oh, I asked okay. you a question in the last program. Um, since you are characteristically associating Manasseh and the meaning of the word and the background and everything that you've been explaining um, to the United States of America, I asked you in the last program, would you then be saying that every single person who lives in the United States of America be of the tribe of Manasseh? And you said... No, definitely not. No, so we're just talking about in the characteristics of, of association to Manasseh, the United States as a country has a fulfillment of those, of those characteristics. So, therefore, um, we would see uh, perhaps a lot of the tribe of Joseph, a lot of the Israelite peoples who would be living in America... And by living in America, America is, is primarily a Christian nation. So therefore, a lot of, of, of those of Joseph would be, uh, who are practicing Christianity, would be living in the United States. But we're not saying that every American is of the tribe of Manasseh. Is that correct? No, we're, saying that, we're not saying that whatsoever. We, are, we do believe, according to our findings of our research, that a good portion or a large and significant proportion of the population of the USA are Israelites, are of Israelite descent. Amongst those Israelites, we will we, we'll find many who are from the tribe of Manasseh. Not only that, we will find that, that those who are descended from Manasseh, uh, maybe because they uh, contributed to the elite ruling elements, or the people who ideologically were very important in the formation of the American character, somehow or other these people uh, came to ex give, give an expression or to, to, to determine the national character of the USA. And that is why, in that sense, the USA may be considered to belong to Manasseh. Okay, so characteristically, you link Ephraim with uh, Britain and, uh, and those countries that are associated with Britain under, under British uh, control. And so, um, how do you make the connection of, of Ephraim being connected with the country of Britain, while at the same time you're not saying that everyone who lives in Britain is physically descended uh, of uh, the tribe of Ephraim, are you? So, no, 
Uh, in general, the British Isles received uh, settlers from all over. A good portion of them, of the settlers, were of Israelite descent, were Israelite tribes. And we can, uh, uh, of these different groups, of the hundreds of different tribes, the small tribes of groups that come from all over the place in the ancient times, settled in Britain, a lot of them have names or other characteristics that relate them to the tribes of Joseph, to different clans of Joseph, above Ephraim and Manasseh. Could you give us some examples of that? We have a uh, Galadon from uh, Gilead. We have Perez from uh, was, uh, from Manasseh. We have Eran in Ireland. Eran was uh, from from Ephraim in Ulster. Uh, we have. Uh, or who are these people that you're referring to, or, or are you referring to regions, or, or these names that you're talking about? What? Who are they? What are they? So, so you, you sprung this on me. <laughs> now, they're all, the different, these, um, Aram, for instance, was another name, but it was the name of the people in Northern Ireland. These were the name of the peoples in Northern Ireland. Peoples, okay, in go Northern ahead. Ireland, and that, that was one of their names, okay? They also have the, the ya, Ya'ari in Ireland, from, from Manasseh. These and are the names of the people. The there. different peoples, they have a different name. For instance, they have uh, hundreds of different names, and uh, certain names put in groups were dominant. They are considered to have ethnic significance that everyone in that area somehow that was related to these peoples. Many of these names are similar to those of, of, of Israelite names or similar to Israelite names that can be understood as being derived from Israelite names. These Israelite names are found in the Bible. They are, clan, they are tribal names, names of Israelite tribes or, or, or names of clans within the tribes, which uh, the Bible gives us Numbers and Genesis and the books of Chronicles and elsewhere. And uh, and we and by associating these names and showing that these names uh, pertain to different tribes, we can show what tribes were dominant dominant in the area. So, so that's the key. You're talking about tribes that were dominant in the area. Yeah. The tribes that are dominant in the so, area. You're describing the characteristics of the lands where uh, tribes of Israel that were dominant in the area. The connection between that's what you're trying to explain. You're not trying to say that every single um, person that lives in England is of the tribe of Ephraim. Uh, no. Okay, we, so continue on. The same thing as we said for America, we're not saying that they're necessarily all Israelites. That Israelites are a significant portion of the population. And so would there be descendants of Israelites, descendants of Israelites, not knowing who their, their ancestors were. Or, for instance, we know the, the ancient Hebrew, the ancient uh, inhabitants of Britain did not call themselves Celts. History, historical books refer to them as Celts. They did not call themselves Celts. The name they used was Iberi. That is the name they used for themselves. Iberi is another way of saying Hebrew. They called themselves Hebrews. Okay, so um, 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 are there those from the tribe of... Let's make the name Iberian for Ireland. We still point it to there. Okay, so um, are, are there people that would be um, um, connected with Manasseh and Ephraim who would be descendants of the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh would they be living in other countries besides the United States and Britain? Yes, also in Canada, also in, throughout Western Europe, actually through, through many areas of the world. There so, was, the Israelites were scattered all over the place. So even they though, congregated in specific areas. They, and the Bible itself says, also a rabbinical commentator said, that the lost tribes, that tribes would be together in one area. They more or less managed to stay together in coherent groups in specific areas and they moved around as different as their bodies and they were often allied to move together with other people who also we can uh, historically also descend from Israelites. So um, uh, those who are descended from uh, Ephraim and Manasseh they're scattered throughout uh, the world but as a group um, they uh, the group the larger part of the group uh, stayed together and, and, and they uh, settled in or they migrated from place to place and, and settled in particular areas and, and, and so therefore uh, we have uh, we're talking about now England that is uh, going to be associated characteristically uh, with Ephraim. That's what we're saying. Exactly. Right? So to help continue on how Ephraim is associated with uh, aristocrats, how that's associated with England, and um, how, uh, let's say, the Union Jack is associated okay. with England. Oh, but, but, we, but we are saying that there that, that would be a significant, significant number of people, physical descendants of Ephraim, amongst these Israelite inhabitants of, of the British Isles. Okay, we, we're, not, we're not entirely... Significant? We're not, we're not entirely 
divorcing ourselves from the physical association. Right. Significant, but not exclusive. Exactly. Okay, yes. continue on. So, um, how's the... So, Ephraim in Hebrew, the word Ephraim in Hebrew is, uh, is, known, is also pronounced Ephrati, someone in, who, would, who belongs to the tribe of Ephraim. Mm -hmm. It's referred to as Ephrati, it's found several times in the Bible. Ephrat in Hebrew means an aristocrat. And the commentators... In the Hebrew language. In the Hebrew language is another name for aristocrat. Okay, so you just, a, we make this association just by the Hebrew language itself. Yeah. Okay, continue. Ephrat is another name for, for aristocrat. Okay, continue on. And this was uh, the one of the uh, attributes of Ephraim, aristocracy. Um, and as distinct from Manasseh, his brother. And uh, so uh, the very name Ephraim connotes has connotations of aristocracy. Okay. And the, we find that the British character is that of aristocracy. Yeah, as a person to person, the British are very egalitarian. They don't like lords, they don't like this and that. But they, somehow or other, they still have the house of lords. It's, it's still worthwhile being born to the, to the family of a lord's family or one of the aristocratic families. But not because materially they get extra benefits, the system has worked in their favour. But the British seem to want it that way. It expresses some aspect of, of, the, of the British character. And even the lower classes feel themselves to be aristocratic compared to other peoples and to uh, just be not, not exactly in the right station that they should have been. It, it's a fundamental element. It's, this, has been noted, uh, this is not something that I am saying. It, uh, we have references that other people, foreigners, describing the British character, have remarked on, 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 the, on this phenomenon. Without any connection whatsoever, the meaning of a prime where well, people who didn't, wouldn't know what I was talking about, wouldn't know what we were referring to, have never looked at the Bible in their lives, but concerning the British, they have remarked that the fundamental aspect of the British character, the British national character, of most British people, is a is a, is a feel of aristocracy, and the, the principle of aristocracy. And this is the only country in the world we have a House of Lords. Upper House is a House of Lords, where Lords have a special privilege to veto or almost veto most legislation, and they have a certain rights and privileges. And this is probably the only country in the world where this was this principle, aristocratic principle, still exists. And it's thriving. It doesn't look like it's going to end any any time soon. Mm -hmm. So how uh, we're getting back to the Union Jack. The Union Jack yeah. is is the flag of Britain. Jack is a, is a short for Jacob. You, literally speaking, Union Jack means the, the combination of the Union Brit, the covenant of Jacob. And we have the expression the tribes of Jacob, referring to the ten tribes of Israel. So uh, the covenant of Jacob. The tribes of Jacob, is that, was that refer to all 12 tribes rather than just the 10 tribes? Uh, it can and it can. It depends uh, how, how on the, on, on the, uh, it depends on, on, on the context of, of the expression. But since uh, sometimes we have Israel, sometimes Israel refers to all the tribes of Israel. Sometimes we have Israel juxt juxtaposed in Judah. Yes. In which case uh, Israel is referring to the 10 tribes, Judah is referring to, to the Jews. Uh, so the same way we have uh, sometimes we have uh, Jacob and Israel juxtaposed, and sometimes it is referring to different aspects of, of, of the Israelite nation. In other cases, it is referring to both Judah and, and and the ten tribes of Israel. So we have to look at it, see what the commentators say, and take care of each case uh, as we find it and analyze it. Okay. But this is a known principle. Okay. So Union so, Jack. Uh, ja uh, oh, we, also, we also also in Jewish uh, writings and so on, uh, mystical writings, and we have. A, Jacob was especially connected with Ephra with Joseph and with Ephraim. Okay, we find this principle. Okay. Uh, so with the Union Jack, uh, the, uh, uh, from uh, re representing the, the British, we also have a Jock, a nickname for a, for a, a Scotsman, which also is derived from Jack. And we have uh, uh, even the French is called Jacques, but it's not so pertinent. And but we also incidentally have the name Yankee. In America, the word Yankee. So there's all different explanations. If you look it up in on the in Wikipedia or on the, on the on the web, you'll find all types of different explanations as to where this word Yankee came from. Maybe the Yaki Indians, maybe from this, maybe from the Dutch pronunciation of Englishman. No one really knows, but we do know that in Hebrew, Yank is short for Yaakov, for Jacob. In Yiddish, Ashkenazic Yiddish, uh, Hebrew. Yank means Jack. In other words, it means Jacob. And Yank, well, even though in, within America itself, Yank refers to the Northern Americans, outside of America, Yank is a nickname for anyone from the USA. 
And so the USA is nicknamed. People from the USA are nicknamed after Jacob, the poor father of the Israelite nations. All right, so um, how else do you get thematically or characteristically have England and its associated countries being connected with Ephraim? How else? What, what other things besides what we've talked about do you... Is the connection of... Um, and England and the associated countries connected with Ephraim. Because you make, that's the connection, the, uh, the characteristic connection you make, right, of Ephraim to England. So historically we have groups, that uh, Iran and so on, who, who did descend from Ephraim, Shutalak and others who descend from Ephraim, who we can show a similar to names of, of tribes, tribal groups that settled within Britain. Also with a, the, uh, a unicorn, which the unicorn was a symbol of Benashia. Okay. A uh, bull was a symbol of Jacob. Oh, sorry, it was a symbol of, of Joseph. In the Bible. In the Bible. Uh, no, no, maybe necessarily. No, in the Bible, the bull is a, is a symbol of Joseph. Bull is a symbol of Joseph. Joseph is the father of Ephraim and Manasseh. But in rabbinical uh, ex exegesis, in the Midrash and so on, bull is specifically associated with Ephraim. Okay. So we have a uh, John Bull. John Bull is a nickname for the English, internationally known nickname for an Englishman, John Bull. Mm -hmm. Bull means, uh, is a bull, symbol of Joseph. Mm -hmm. We also have the very name English. When England comes from Agel, Agel, Agel land, or Angle land, and the, the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jews conquered uh, England, the area of Britain, from the so called Celtic peoples, and they settled there. Uh, even the Saxons uh, who were together with the Angles, they uh, referred to themselves as Angles, so uh, they identified with Angles, so it was known as Angle Land. Angle can also be pronounced as Agel on the continent, in Germany and also in, in, in Holland and so on. So it's another way of pronouncing, Agel is another way of pronouncing Angle, they're one of the same names. Well, so in Hebrew you have the word Agel, which means a bull car. An Agel in Hebrew, in Biblical Hebrew, could be pronounced as Angle. So the words angle and angle are in effect the same, one of the same words. So, it, in, so Britain, England, is called Angle Land, it's called the, la, the, the, the land of the Buka. In the Jeremiah chapter 3, also as confirmed by Rashi, Angle is a nickname for Ephraim. So we find the very name England to be named after the, as a, to be named after nickname for Ephraim. Okay, so now we, we are making a connection um, of England being associated with Ephraim. Of course, Ephraim is uh, one of the sons of Joseph, but Ephraim is also a term uh, that refers to the ten tribes in general. And in the book of Obadiah, in chapter 1 and verse 20, where it talks about the captivity, the hosts of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, it speaks of Zephyroth, which we've in previous shows we've talked that that is a direct reference to France because that's the meaning of uh, the word France in the Hebrew language but the commentator says that this uh, can apply to um, England as well uh, but um, what was prophesied of the tribes of Israel which would include the ten tribes is that they would be located in the Isles of the Sea and of course we refer to England as the British Isles so um, one thing in and of and by itself doesn't necessarily make a proof, but when you when you take of all the different things and, and weigh it and bring it all together, then it it becomes a weighted evidence of itself. And so that's why what we're doing is is we're giving a, a, a number of these associations, and we don't have time to do a complete list. We're just giving a little bit of a preview of those associations. So, uh, behind you, you have a couple books that you wrote, some Joseph books. We want to make mention of that um, here. So, this book that you wrote is uh, Joseph, the Israelite Destiny of America. And uh, then, this is a more recent uh, a book. Uh, here you have uh, Uncle Sam here and the unicorn. And this book is Rule to Rule, The Task of Joseph. So you, made, uh, you mentioned the connection of the unicorn, and there's another book uh, that you wrote called uh, Lost uh, Israelite Identity, and let me grab that book and show that. 
lost Israelite identity, and, and, and this is the unicorn as well. And uh, it's subtitled, The Hebrew Ancestry of Celtic Races. And so, um, um, he, this, this is uh, another book, Ephraim, The Gentile Children of Israel. And we're going to be talking about um, this um, in uh, greater detail in ensuing programs, but there's another book uh, that you wrote, The Tribes, the Israelite Origins of Western Peoples. And so we'll just uh, spend maybe a program or two just talking about uh, this book, uh, but this is just a sampling of uh, the books that you've written on this topic and this subject from the research um, using um, the Bible, using... Um, uh, rabbinical sources, history, linguistics, um, and other things. So, um, this has got to conclude our program for this week. Uh, we pray that it's been a blessing to you. Now, remember always these words from 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. He who says he abides in him, or he who says he's a believer in Yeshua, as the Messiah ought himself to walk, that means to live our lives, even as he walked. And how did Yeshua live his life? He followed the Torah of his Father. Even so, he commanded those who believe on him, John chapter 14, verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. And keeping commandments is following the Torah. Shalom in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen.